Hello. Hi. Thank you for the clapping. Hi, hi, hi. Salut. Hello. Everybody. Making me look bad. Okay. Salut. Salut. Sorry. Was it Daniel? Yes. Was it Daniel's fault? Yes. Always. No one go to Daniel, okay? No one go to Daniel now because now we have less time. It's crazy. So, questions? What's up, guys? Hey, Linka. Hey. I get you, I get you. Uh, well, Brendan and Lois is still my favourite couple, because I'm in it. Um, what is it? Uh, uh, I don't know. What? I mean, personally, I've always, Kono, my character's always loved Daenerys. So Kono is just waiting, dream one day she will love me. You know what I mean? It's, that's what it's, Kono is always thinking that. So that is, in my character's head, that is all he wants to happen. Also, I just want to see, like, the dragon and the night king. You know, like, that would be an interesting coupling. They would make some beautiful, powerful children. That would be interesting. So maybe, maybe the Night King of the Dragon. I don't know. <laughs> I would. I was. That's a really good question. That's uh, no, no, a pretty good answer. Sorry. Uh, me and, uh, no. Uh, I promise you, at some point during this Q and A, I will just say two names out loud, and that's what I'm thinking. But just give me a step. Is that all right? Sorry. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Elinka. Hello. Hello. A uh, question for both of you, in fact. Uh, but first, I get in, uh, you work as a voice actor for video games. Uh, have you ever thought of doing voice acting for an audio book? And for staff as well, if you ever considered voice acting? Uh, I, I, yes, I absolutely have. I've done one, actually, for a, a book that wasn't, it wasn't, if I'm right about this, please, I hope if I'm wrong about this, I'm very sorry, but I think it was a book that was introduced by George Martin, or, so it was, it was fantasy writers, it wasn't George's work, it was other fantasy writers, but I think it was curated by George or something, which is why they asked me to do it, and I had a brilliant time, that was about four or five years ago. Um, and I really, really love reading out stories. Like I, I get a real kick out of it. I do this thing called Word Theatre Live, where we actors read out short fiction. Uh, which is it's really super fun. I mean, I'd love to do that. Yeah. That's it. It's really fun. Uh, so yeah, I enjoy that a lot. And I'm, I'm trying to think if I've done another audio book. I've done a lot of video games, a lot of radio, radio drama. I love it. Um, I actually did an audio book years ago, but it was like a translation book, like. This is my ball. The my the my whatever you know in a different language. I forgot. I forgot Russian there. I'm Russian. That's embarrassing. Um, but yeah, so I, I've done them as a kid. But 100%, I, I love reading books, and you know it would be great to 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 bring a book to life through an audiobook one day. 100%. 100%. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We had good agents. We were very lucky. <laughs> but, um, do you know what? It's, when, when, when you take a fantastic book or a fantastic concept that has already worked and you bring it to the screen, it's always very exciting from a creative perspective to, to get to be a part of turning something. You know, because I was speaking to some of the, the, some of the people coming to see us today. You know, when you read a book, you create your own version of the story. So you get an opportunity to try and live that. Uh, on TV, on screen, so that's kind of, uh, yeah, that's the brilliant aspect. And in terms of why we did this, um, like I said, we're very lucky, you know, it's, it, this, this industry is very competitive and people don't realise that. And I just think we were very lucky to have good agents and we got given an opportunity and they liked us. So it's luck, chance and fate maybe, I don't know. Thank you. Oh, what happened to Kevin's answer? I agree. I agree. <laughs> Judas. She doesn't even hear me, she doesn't know we're talking about her right now. She's walking away still. She's still walking. She's still walking. She has no idea. What about Kevin? What about his answer? I'm sorry, I'm being an asshole. Sorry. I'll just quickly say exactly what he said, plus a bit more. Okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, non Game of Thrones related, if I may. Uh, question each. Stars, I know. 
know you uh, play piano, I don't know if you still do. Yes. I was curious uh, if you have a favorite piece of music to play on piano. Oh, that's a really good question. Um, good question. Good question. Do you know what? I, I started writing, I used to write music as a kid. That was kind of my first creative outlet, um, just because it felt nice. I didn't really have toys. I liked to draw things and create things. So I never really, I love listening. I, I, I was born in 91, so I'm a pop child. So I, you know, I like my Adele's and stuff like that. I'm not embarrassed to say it. Don't judge me. No one judge me. Um, nothing wrong with Adele. Thank you. Um, but. I can't even give you a piece that I learned. I, I just, what I try to do is just spend as much time, I try to give as much time to musical creativity as acting. And right now acting has been my focus and I'm so grateful for that. But I think the most important thing for me is just to make sure I give an hour a week just on the piano. You know what I mean? Keep myself creative. Yeah. Thank you very much for the question. Lovely question. Glad to know you're still playing piano. Bao shao. Uh, that's a very good question, and um, I think, to be honest, I think uh, a lot of professional clinical psychologists and doctors would would, uh, would come up uh, stumped on that question as well, and, and not really know why. Uh, yeah, but you have to understand something about it. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I worked really hard to, along with the writers and the creators of the show, to try and uh, have a human understanding of what were incredibly serious and, and violent crimes. And, um, Honestly, I, I think he, he was a, a person who, uh, for whatever reason, wanted to be heard and by the world. And he saw very, um, he went by that in very, in very you know, uh, hor horrific means to, to be heard. And, and uh, I guess being in prison for a lot of his younger life fed into that, wanting to be heard by uh, more people than, you know, uh, than the average person. So, um, yeah. That's probably the best I can come up with. Can I say one thing regarding that question? Just because I'm just, obviously as an actor massively into psychology and everything. You mentioned that yesterday. Yes, yeah, I'm sure I did. I love to talk. Uh, but, uh, guilty. Um, but no, I, I think a big thing with, with, with all these things, it's such, a, it's such a difficult topic to tread, isn't it? You know, with, with these kind of things. But I think a, a, a statement that I think everyone should hear and everyone should understand is the more we separate ourselves from these types of people and pretend we don't have to understand them, the more these people keep being created, keep being, keep manifesting, and we keep having to deal with this. And I think part of the problem nowadays is we look at these psychopaths, we look at these serial killers, and we look at these cult leaders, and we go, oh God, no, no, I would never do that. But if we can, find, we, we don't know, we've never been through their circumstance. I'm not justifying the, the, the atrocities of what happened, but by having no understanding, we can't change that. Thank you. I've got a clap. My mum will be very proud. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Romania. Hi. Thank I've you. Got Thank you. For both of you. Uh, what was or were the most difficult scenes for you to film in your throat? Well, I can't say what I was going to say there. That was close. <laughs> oh, they almost slipped up. Nearly got it. Nearly got it. Okay, no, okay. Yeah, second answer. Um, <laughs> filming with dragons. I'll tell you why, because you know what a dragon is? A tennis ball. A tennis ball. You think I'm lying? I ain't lying to you. A dragon is either a tennis ball or a bit of tape. So it's, look at the tennis ball. Look at the ball. Look at the tape. Look at the tape. Look at the orange tape. Look at the orange tape. And obviously one thing is like the dragon's flying. The dragon's injured. You have to keep creating. And as you know, like we were talking about this yesterday, green screen acting, when you have to create the whole world around you for yourself. That's often the hardest, and I don't even know if I'm that good at it, I don't know. But I think there's a real art to be able to create the world around you. So that's probably the hardest, big green screen jobs or dragon jobs. Yeah, I think for very, very similar reasons, this scene where Redley is killed, horrifically. Uh, was we, we, we shot that particular scene on three separate days, if I, my memory serves me correctly. And we did the scene where um, Michelle and uh, Gwendolyn were, were sort of reacting and there was sort of this amazing performances which create the drama of it. So that was one scene and then or one day and then on another day we uh, we shot on a green screen and we did I think they call them plates where they sort of use the cameras and a little bit of green screen to so they they shoot in front of a green screen so they can then draw I guess or paint on a 
digitally paint the image of, of the shadow. And then there was a whole other day where we did some other elements to it as well. So that was a really sort of technically difficult scene to deliver. Um, another scene that was difficult for me was the one where I was already dead and I had to be dead for a long time while well, um, uh, Finn and Matt did this great scene around me and, and then Finn, Lawrence was freaking out and, um, and that was amazing to sort of hear, I couldn't see it um, because they, they actually like, because uh, the crown was on my um, here, that was like I was lying in state like that and the crown was here and obviously I need to breathe Renly wasn't breathing, but I was. So they had to like create this this thing, this metal thing that was basically they screwed me into a table. So I was just like there for a few hours. They were very nice, giving me water and stuff, but I just had to lay there while they, they did the whole thing around me. So that was kind of a, a weird day. So yeah. Thank you very much for the Alice words. Uh, welcome to Romania again. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Hello, my hello, my team. <laughs> right. Whoa, 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 whoa. What about hello to the Dothraki friend over here? Just call me anything. Thank you, thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, hey, that is a great question. Uh, I think uh, one of the things that is very clear in the books, and uh, we had less time to show on the television uh, series is how graceful Renly is uh, with people and um, how he really he believed himself to be a representative of the people whether they were wealthy or not or if they uh, if they were from less wealthy backgrounds you know um, he wanted to represent everyone in Westeros and so he snuck in that little scene where he asks about a stable hands uh, who's injured his foot and says I hope you're okay basically in the scene um, and so taking that from any leader, a leader who thinks about the, 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 the guys working and the guys and gals working at the very bottom of whichever organization you're the leader of, if you're worried about the, the you know, any, everyone from the bottom to the top in that hierarchy, um, I think that's something we can all learn from in any part of our lives. You know, if, we, if you run a coffee shop, you know, worry about who's cleaning, cleaning the coffee shop. You know, that if, if, if you can keep that mentality in any part of your life, that's really, uh, I think, fair. so yeah. Thank you, man. Thanks, Thanks man. Thank you. Thank you, man. Hi, guys. Hey, my dude. Uh, so, question for both of you. Uh, do you think that Randy would have made a great king and Connor better cut than Drago? Oh, no. I am his breakfast. I'm not going to pretend that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to. It's just like asking, you know, who, you know, no, it's just, no, no, no. no. It's like a difference between an Isabel and a dragon. Let's be honest, you know. Kono, Kono is a fantastic bodyguard. Kono, Kono, you know, he loves his queen and he, he, he's there to, to the death. But Karl Drogo will always be Karl Drogo. Um, regarding Renly being a king, I, I, everything you just said there about humility and humbleness, we can all learn that, le learn from that, whether we are, like you said, whether we're working in a hairdresser's or whenever we're working on these big sets. Humility is so important and that is definitely something that Renly brought in terms of royalty and monarchy and that's not necessarily a, an instant or like natural comparison you would make, royalty, humility. They're, so I think 100%. I don't know in, with the Seven Kingdoms and, and the, how he would fare, but as a person, as an, as an essence, yes, he would make a fantastic king, a loyal and compassionate king. Thanks, man. It's I think that would be a great He bought me a drink earlier, he told me to say this, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think he'd be a great car, man. Denise Thanks, man. man. We can get along really well. If you notice, we get along really well. Um, and I, I, yeah, I think Renly would, would be a great king in the right circumstances. I'm not sure he'd be the great, greatest war king, as we saw, but he'd be the best peacetime leader, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I still believe that. He would share the, he would share the Iron Throne. Here's some for you, and some for you, and you get some too. Where's the dragon? Come over here, get some of this, get some of this throne! That's what he would do. There's times in Westeros, man. It'd be fun. Yeah, right. Yeah. We'd all share it. Can we all just get along? You know? Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I, I, I have a question for both of you. Um, if you could take any other character besides yours in the show, who would you take? Good question. I want to say a joke one first. The dragon, because I do no work and I get paid a lot and I'll be a tennis ball. It'd be really fun. Um, no, actually, I don't know what I'd be. <laughs> um, do you know what? All jokes aside, 
describe, if I was a woman, something like Maisie's character, Arya, because A, something so powerful about, about Game of Thrones is that we have these brilliant, powerful, con, you know, strong female characters from an all spectrums, you know? You have, you know, the, the mean, powerful Lena Headey who plays Cersei, and Emilia who is, has a lot of love but has a callous side that no one really gets to understand or see, and obviously Arya who is this young, powerful entity, probably Arya. And it'd be, it would have been amazing to be young and to experience the whole journey of that from such a young age. And she's, she's so brilliant, you know? Young actors, sometimes they can go a bit, sometimes, you know? And she's just brilliant and humble. Yeah, maybe Arya, I think. I think Elena Terrell would be a great character to play. I, mean, I could never match that performance, but... <laughs> uh, I always thought... I, well, no, I mean, she's just an amazing performance as well. But I, I think... Um, I always thought, like, working with Aidan Gillen was a, was a real treat, and I think Littlefinger is a really interesting dark character. There's a lot of darkness in it. So, actually, and Varys as well. I mean, kind of nailed it, but, like, to play that part would be really interesting. So he's like, I think it'll be really fun. And I think I think I would be the most fun part to play. Yeah. For real. Uh, yeah. Lots there. Thank you, thank you. We'll do it. Thank you. Hey guys. Hey. Hey, man. Uh, question from Bob Uh when the show is over, if you could take one prop from the show and hang it out in your wall, what would it be? Oh, that's a good question. Do you mean the things I haven't already stolen? Like separately? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> what do you know? Yeah, <laughs> what do you are you with HBO? Is this not HBO? HBO? <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. Um, God, that's a really good question. Honestly, for me, probably my Iraq. My, just, I've been carrying that thing for a long time, and it would just be nice to have it, and when I'm 70 and old, I'd be like, look, kids, I used to be a Dothraki, you know? It just, it'd be nice. I think the knife, the sword. They were very, uh, they were very sweet, and they gave me one of, uh, Reading's brooches, so I had that to keep, which was beautiful. Uh, I'd probably, if I could get my hands on Reddy's crown, I just think it fits me. So, so I, I, you know, <laughs> rub that in the night out. Um, yeah, you know. Um, but if I could steal something, something from somebody else's, what else would they? Do I? The dire wolf, because they actually, for the dire wolf, they have a big, they have the big prosthetic wolf. Remember? Do you know? You know when Viserys got killed? Go way back season one. You know the the gold because that was like they had a real thing on Harry there. Like yeah, I think I just like, I always say it's my favorite death. He's my best friend. I love him. Um, but just like if I could get the gold and then put it on Harry every now and then, I'd be like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like, you know, a bit of, bit of 
brotherly beef. It's hard to get over, still. I think Renly probably hates that. I just love to hate Joffrey. Oh, he's so hateable. It's like, oh, shut up, you know, it is like, yeah. He was, and also, I, I don't know, you guys probably know, he's one of the loveliest guys. I have met him, but everyone who's worked with him said he's the sweetest, nicest, the polar opposite of his character. So it's really great when you get to hate someone so much and then you realize they're actually really nice through your life. Lena Headey's the same. You know, Cersei, you love to hate her, but you also respect her power and how she's come up against everything. But, you know, she's so lovely in real life. So lovely in real life. And, and Tywin Lannister as well. You know, he, yeah, he, he's easy to not like. Yeah. yeah. Especially as a Moravian. Anyway. Um, Danny, yes, And uh, who do you think that will be the queen or the king of the Seven Kingdoms? Me! No. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a dragon, you know what I mean? That would be the best thing. He'd be like, Khaleesi, look, I've been Dracarising everywhere. Okay, enough Dracaris. I'm just gonna sit on the throne for a minute. No, I, I think I think Khaleesi. But I can't, yeah, I can't. Uh, I always thought, when, when I, you know, when I was on the show, um, Bran and Arya were young, you know, they were children, you know, they were kids, you know, young, and they're, they're now adults, and uh, I always think they would make a really good team, like to have like Bran, if you were around, and Arya, if you were around, and then Brienne was like their like chief general. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah. They kind of came together as like kind of uh, what's the word? Coalition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or something. Yeah. You know, like a the nicer like a, people, like a government, you know, like a parliament, government. Yeah. Being readily as always. Everyone together. Everyone happy <laughs> together. Because that's the best way. Yep, The Wire. If I could go back and somehow be a small I was about to say The Wire, I, I would definitely... That, that, that piece of television is like an incredible achievement. And then, yeah, I've watched it like five times. <laughs> Honestly. All the way through. So yeah, The Wire. Oh, easy. That, I was we used to talk about The Wire on set. Like there was a, a moment when we were filming in uh, Northern Ireland on the... Um, on the north coast, and we were all staying in this beautiful inn, I think Bush Mills Inn, and there were like three different groups of actors, and we were all describing the same moment uh, in The Wire to other actors who hadn't seen it. And we all noticed that we were all talking about the same thing, um, uh, all of us who were there, so yeah, I really, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, 100% as well. I actually only started, I only finished watching The Wire uh, a couple months ago, so I was late on it, I took my time with it, but 100%, I mean, absolutely magnificent. Um, also, I love Breaking Bad, and it's, obvious, it's very obvious, and it's like, okay, yeah, Breaking Bad, other big TV show, but just the, the story is very powerful as well. They didn't find success straight away, you know? They, they, they did their first few seasons, and they randomly started getting success, and they kind of broke, and, you know, I mean, Heisenberg, why is my brain not working? What's in Heisenberg? Brian Cranston. Ooh. Brian Cranston, you know, his story is brilliant as well. Like, he, he was a Malcolm in the Middle as the dad. You know, now he, you I know, to be in Malcolm in the Middle. Oh, that's that's a great show. Be a lot of fun. But you know, and now he's become probably the most evolved and the, the, the most brilliant archetype and story. You know, so that anyone can really think of. So yeah, I would love to have been a, been a, played a role on, on, on Breaking Bad. Thank you. Thank you. My second uh, question is: What's your most memorable fan meeting? Oh, wow, that is a really good question, and I have a very quick answer. Yeah. There's a gentleman whose name uh, escapes me, but it, it was uh, several, several years ago. Uh, I met a gentleman in the UK, back from my home, and uh, he was in a wheelchair. And he made his wheelchair, in, like he was cosplaying as Renly in the Iron Throne. And he made his wheelchair, and it was, and it was like the coolest cosplay here. And, and I, uh, he, he'd just done all this work on his costume and the crown, and it was just like in the show, and he was, he was moving around and he was really cool to meet him. So that was a really cool cosplay, yeah. I thought. Mine actually is, is, is somewhat similar. I was actually before, I used to do music for a living, before I was an actor, and I was in a band. And uh, we had this, we had this amazing fan called Tammy Franks. Wherever you are, Tammy, lots of love. But Tammy Franks, is she here? Tammy? No, but Tammy, Tammy also was in a wheelchair. 
and she had this amazing ability of being in a wheelchair but getting to another destination before us. So we would go from London to a, for, a, for a gig and then Birmingham and Tammy would be at the Birmingham event before us. How, why, they're just magical and she just would go everywhere and such a proud, brilliant, confident individual and just, I don't know whether she had like an engine on her wheelchair or something but she was getting everywhere before us. I don't know, where she, maybe she like tied herself really to the back cool. of the car. Yeah, maybe it was behind us and we never knew. I don't know, but Tammy. Tammy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. You too, darling. Hello, guys. Um, I have two questions. One for each one of you. Um, first one is about Kono. Uh, do you think uh, if Daenerys would win the Iron Throne, if she would get to see it, would Kono uh, give up his Dothraki uh, culture for a white cloak in the Queen's Guard? And the second one is about... Uh, yeah, that is a good Ooh. question. That's a good uh, question. Yeah. Question of the day, well done. Um, that's a good question. Uh, the answer is he'll never be part of the Iron Guard because he doesn't wear metal dresses. <laughs> Simple as that. Oh. Hey, the Dothraki pride themselves in being so agile and so nimble and so aware of themselves and being on a horse that the idea, we don't need to weigh ourselves down on metal dresses. Um, He's a blood rider as well, and blood riders is, is through and throughout. You know, when our queen dies, we we we, revenge, we, we, we find revenge and we die ourselves. You know, it's it's so it's it's, it's only one way or the other. The only thing is about Kono is that he loves Daenerys, but he knows he can't do anything because he's a blood rider and he's never going to be called Drogo. But you know what I mean? But yeah, that's my answer. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, the second one is from Michael, and I wanted to ask you: Do you think that Renly knew about Brienne's feelings about him, and what do you think he would have done if he knew? Good question again. That's a really good question. Ooh. And I think, um, I think Renly did know, and he had the grace to uh, do what he could, which was, it's one of those things when uh, someone has so much love for a person and they want to serve them in, if you're in royalty, that's, you know, that's a, a realistic situation. Um, and so he was gonna do everything he could to make her dreams come true as he saw them, which was to, to serve in the Rainbow Guard, as it was in the books. Um, so, yeah, I guess he did what he could. Uh, and if he carried on, I think he would have just made her like the general of his armies and, you know, he, she did occupy the highest place in uh, in his sort of uh, administration, if you like, as, as he could give yeah, her. That would have been, would have been great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Great question. Well, you too, you too. Hi, guys. Hey, what's hey, up? Hey, Donna. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure about Kelly, I know Stas will do it, but... She's probably right. <laughs> She's probably right. <laughs> would you like to sing for us? Stas does. I no. Know. What do you want me to sing, Donna? Well, this is what you get for being a triple threat. <laughs> you can do Rocky Horror or something. Um, what would I sing? Someone get, give me a song that I would know. Someone give me a song and I would go, oh, Is it anybody's birthday today? Is anyone's birthday today? Is anyone's birthday? No. Anyone's? No, that's embarrassing. Oh, that's right. Um, um, oh, okay, I'll sing the first song I ever recorded by John Legend. Want to be all? Oh, God, this is so. You have a stage for this, boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Girl, I'm in love with you. This ain't the honeymoon. Past the infatuation phase. Rather than the thick of love. Times they get sick of love. Seems like we argue every day. I hate you right now. I know I misbehave and you made your mistakes. We both still got room left to grow. Still hate you. And though times and times hurt, I still put you first. And We'll make this thing work, but I think we should take it slow. We're just ordinary people. We don't know which way to go. Cause we're ordinary people. Maybe we can just take it slow. Take it slow. Anything. Anyway, thank you. Woo! Please.
So, I think I think Star Wars and Thrones mashup is kind of fun. Like, if cool. Star Wars they went to a planet and it was actually Westeros, that would be quite cool. Use I don't the know what the media would do in that context. That would be confusing. <laughs> and Gwen. Okay, okay. What about horror in a skirt or a tutu? You know, like Hodor. Hodor. Yeah. Adorable. Loris <laughs> would definitely live in that world, and Renny would visit him sometime, and they'd just have like, a fun holiday together, and then Renny would get back to work. You need to make this. I'll definitely watch it. This is okay. fit on the phone. Thank you, darling. Thank you, thank you. We're running out of time, so we have time for one more question. Elinka with the rewind. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come see us wherever we are. We're still sitting. Come say hi. Welcome, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.